The show is called The Dark of Absolute Freedom. It comes from Ad Reinhardt, who was one of my favourite artists, but I actually think it has a Taoist origin. We habitually think of freedom as the, the ability to say, yes, I want that, and no, I don't want that. You know, it's about choices. But freedom at its deepest level is a kind of freedom of spirit and heart. And what happens you know, in those situations when really difficult things happen. People die on us, um, people leave us. We have a lot of pain. And yet there is this wonderful reality. We can still have freedom and joy in those dark moments. So that to me is the essence of the dark of absolute freedom. I think the, the common thread in all of my work is just this really simple question. What is this? You know, what is this that exists and what does it mean? For me, it's, it's a question that's, that, you know, erupted in a three-year-old's mind when she first noted that she was kind of different. <laughs> I grew up in various suburbs of Brisbane. I have to describe my childhood as really painful. If you're, you know, called a slanty eye or, or slope head from the age of three, you kind of begin to figure out that maybe there's something wrong with you. I feel a lot for my mother and father because they came into a situation where A, they felt very grateful to come to Australia because things were not good in China. There was war and revolution. Uh, but they also came to a place not very accepting of difference. And we're talking about a period called assimilation, the late 50s, 60s and into the 70s. And assimilation was meant for the best, but what happened was that people like my parents, who, who came from different cultures, had to really hide and deny, you know, you had to be whiter than white really, and that inevitably led to a kind of uh, denial. Uh, I really, really wanted to be white, and that's, that's a very sad situation because I'm never going to be white, ever. <laughs> During the 80s, all sorts of ideas about originality and authenticity began to take shape. What I was trying to do was actually see how this body, this, this uh, Chinese body born in Australia, uh, how it fit into this kind of European culture that I was actually born into. young art student, I was doing honours. So every time I'd sort of start doing something, it would remind me of something else. So there's this, just this weight of, of, of reference, of association, of history, and there was a really big burden to be original, except that nothing was original anymore. So I just decided on one simple strategy, and that was to just go to the paintings that I had grown up loving, the paintings that I fell in love with when I had travelled in Europe and copy them and see if in the copying I could translate something or communicate something of how they move me. So as I was working with these copies, I just began to feel my own nature as a really, really flawed and bad copy of being European, which I'm clearly not, 
and copy of being Chinese, which I'm only partially. Following on from this kind of absorbing interest in, in European art history, the wall of denial about being Chinese actually it loomed. And I found myself having to address this really repressed part of me. As I sort of began to really look at my family and my family stories, I realised that there was so much painful memory buried in my, my parents' past. Indefinite uh, separation, revolution and imprisonment and, you know, great hardship. The family work, as I'll call it, starts out from a very specific thing, individual experience, but individual experience mirrors so much of what's going on in the world. And it's the story of difference and how difference in any culture and any society is either welcomed or shunned. People often ask me, which is more important, my art practice or my Zen practice? You know, and they're the same. My art flows out of my Zen practice. The only question that's really important to me is, is, is the nature of being, okay? What it is to, to just simply exist. In the burning of the work or just in the, the colouring of panels, there's this repetition. And in that repetition is the commitment to come into this moment. And in this moment, the way I like to describe it is you're pitching into eternity. In Buddhism, eternity isn't in some other place. It's just right here. It's the eternity of now. The most important recent development in my work is that is the engagement with the elemental. You know, so fire is an element, water is an element. When you pour molten bronze onto a foundry floor, it's, it's this intense orange. I love it when the, uh, the foundry floor catches a light with fire. That is an amazing moment. There's alchemy there. Something very special is happening. The bronze is like wax. It cools really quickly. And again, the energy of the pour or the splash is contained within it. And I remember the guys at the foundry going, looks pretty cruddy and ugly to me, but any, but uh, once you start to polish it, then that sort of gold comes through. Each splash is like a, a creature. You know, they're, they're, they're so alive. And the more highly polished they are, the more alive they become. And then they catch the light, and that light becomes like fire again. And that's part of the Zen practice. There's gold in every single moment of your life, no matter where you are. You know, no matter what's happening, it is possible to have gold. So when I started to do these sort of black drawings, I call them, with fire, they're about cosmos. And this very important statement that no matter what, Cosmos is entirely fabric to what we are. There's this experience that you have in meditation where you understand that the boundaries of self are not just this, you know. And I, I kind of like to demonstrate it sometimes, like if you throw a ball, where do you, where do you begin and you end in that action? 
the term infinite and infinity comes up. And when you really think about it, what you are is infinite, okay? Just by virtue of interconnection. Just over the last couple of years, I've started to do really large public art projects. So I was contacted by Lyndall Jones, who asked me to create a Chinese garden for Avoca, which is a small country town in Victoria. And this garden actually commemorates the Chinese on the gold fields. And I think what we're creating in this garden is a really beautiful and particular kind of Chinese-Australian vernacular. My art is a response to some niggling thing inside of me, which generally is a question about existence. It's all existence. And most of the time when a new body of work begins, I don't even know what the question is. But I know that something is really moving me and pushing me to do this. So that's what my art is. It's about trying to provide a space for these questions about existence to come up and then to address those questions as they relate to my life and other people's lives.